Well, I'm a slut for money. All right, here we are, post Thanksgiving. We have a couple bottles of wine. I'm not a wine drinker, but I love wine pasta. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna make wine pasta with two different bottles of wine. One that's probably like 10 to $15, Legends and Vines. We have our cup right here. And we have another bottle, estimated to be half a grand to a grand, 2002 Opus One, a Napa Valley red wine, produced and bottled by Robert Mondavi and Baron Philippe de Rothschild. We have our glass, a gloss. Time to give a wine taste test. $10? <coughs> Disgusting. Like no, but I love red wine pasta. $1,000 wine and like $10 wine. Oh yeah. That thousand dollar wine is so much smoother. The ten dollar wine, you like take a sip and a blast of sour and like it's like almost taking a shot. This one, smooth as butter. It's gonna be very simple. Not too many ingredients today. Garlic, olive oil, red pepper, butter, the red wine, salt, and our pasta. Got our dollar store pasta, pagasa, macaroni product, penny. Beanie, cheesy on my beanie. First thing I'm gonna do is we have to chop a garlic clove. Yes, sir. Crush it with a knife. <laughs> I'm just gonna cook and mama this. Garlic is chopped up. Ancho chile pepper. Well, I don't have virgin olive oil, so vegetable oil will have to do. We're gonna do two tablespoons of oil. And our garlic. Let's go to the stove. Since we're doing two different wines, we gotta have two different pots on two different burners, so. Over medium. My favorite wood stick. So we're gonna add half of our garlic oil concoction to one, and the other half to the other. A tablespoon of butter. Half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes in both. Now that these are very fragrant, we're gonna add in our wine. Increasing to medium high heat. We're gonna bring these to a boil. That's Korean for it. it smells good. Time to boil our pasta. Oh, with salt to make it go faster. Cheesy on the beanie. Oh, got blasted. Our garlic butter red wine. We're gonna reduce the heat on these bad boys. All right, our water's boiling, so now, whoo, let us add the pasta to the pot. Now we're keeping our red wine pasta sauces on low to keep them nice and warm while our pasta is cooking and getting ready to get mixed in. Our pasta looks nice and soft. Woo. So let's get ready to drain it. Hopefully this is big enough. Probably not. Woo. Just barely enough. Look at this. Look at this. Let's add half of it to our cheapo pasta and the other half to our expensive pasta. We gotta stir these nice and good. And we're gonna add some more butter to it, because why not? So we'll add two tablespoons of butter to each. Our butter. Here's our cheap pasta and our expensive pasta. It's already a lot smoother. Let's try both. First the cheap one. It's really sour. Yeah, the grapes are too strong. Fresh mozzarella balls. Oh my goodness. I can't even open a packaging.
Finally. That's really good with mozzarella. That Parmesan. That cheap craft, craft, craft. Oh yeah, it adds like that smoked element to it. It's perfect. It really brings down the sourness of the wine. It balances everything out. Parmesan with the mozzarella. That makes this beautiful. Time to get a new fork. We don't want to cross-contaminate in our expensive wine. Right off the bat, this is so good. This is really smooth. It's got like a subtle hint of garlic. The wine comes in not too strong. Wow, that is so good. Now we add the mozzarella balls. Mmm, wow. This is like heaven. Wow, red wine pasta is like my favorite. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Man, this is fire. I can't stop eating this. Now with the Parmesan. I'd say the difference with Parmesan between these, the Parmesan really brings this one out more. It, it balances it from that really sour, cheap taste. Well, on this one, it almost is better plain because it's such great quality wine. The Parmesan does still bring a hint of that smokiness, so it's still really good. Mm. These mozzarella balls, though, bring them both to be next level. Mm -hmm. That's it right there. I definitely could have added more garlic to both. I didn't want to put too much because I thought it would overpower it. Extremely garlic and no wine taste, but right now it has like a subtle undertone. You can definitely still taste the garlic, but it could be a lot stronger. Plain summoning jutsu. <laughs> so this is the cheap, this is the expensive. We shall be having taste. Yeah, not bad. Cheap one's kind of bland, I think. To me, it was sour. I didn't like it's it. It's kind of sour, yeah. You hype this one up, so if it's good, I'm gonna kill it. Oh, yeah, it's bad. That's a lot better. <laughs> it's noticeably better. It's just like instantly smoother, instantly creamier. It's just like got a better flavor. A little cleaner. Yeah. It goes down easier. That cheap one is just like taking a shot. Jeez. I mean, it's good. It is good. It balances it out. It's not as like sour because the smokiness kind of like brings it down. I don't know. I'm not a food expert. That's <laughs> good. Food is food. That's primo though. I guess. The overall verdict is the more money you spend, the better quality you're gonna get in terms of wine, in terms of a lot of things actually, but not usually, but actually. Usually you pay more, you get higher quality. That just is how the scale works, but that's how it went. So our better pasta or the more expensive wine produced the better pasta as fully expected, honestly, but you can redeem the cheap pasta with Parmesan. At the end of the day, it's still red wine pasta, so. This has been an episode of Vander Cooks, and we'll see you next time.